right. because, uh, well, for a million reasons, but one of them is that I don't need an answer. I don't need to grasp at an answer just because it may seem reasonable to somebody else. I am only going to accept explanations that I am convinced of. And I'm not convinced of that one, partially because I would imagine uh, I, I'm not an expert in the field and haven't had anybody demonstrate it, but also because it's not something that's uh, generally scientifically accepted. It's, it's, in the, it's in the fringes. It's the, the neat ideas category, like the, the, the God uh, particle and the, uh, the equation, the, the one... But I guess more importantly is, is it doesn't affect my atheism. Yeah, actually, it probably doesn't affect anything. I mean, my, my acceptance or rejection of, of the various claims doesn't have any impact on my life. I mean, I'm not going to change, you know, my shopping habits or anything else based on this. I guess what I'm saying is if there's a multiverse, that really isn't the reason that I believe or don't believe in God. Yeah. It has nothing to do, has no bearing on my belief. My disbelief in God um, is not based on whether or not there's a multiverse. Yeah. Okay, so I guess my third question would be then if this hydrogen collider or let's say some sort of technology is invented in 20 years that um, picks up what is called the God particle, um, what would your um, beliefs be then? It would depend on what it demonstrated. But well, I mean, if something, if something is. is well, the, um, the, the creator of the universe, right? If if it's dem if something is demonstrated, I, I would not accept demonstrable conclusive evidence. I would, but until that day, uh, I don't believe it. But my my thing is, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just really really wrong here because this isn't my area at all. But uh, the God particle has nothing to do with demonstrating that there's a creative intelligence behind the universe. It's a label that they put on a hypothetical particle that they're trying to demonstrate that may give us the answers yeah. about, but that it doesn't mean that there's all of a sudden this transcended intelligent being. Right. Just to clarify, what I was saying was whatever is demonstrated, yeah. I would accept, but I, it would depend on what was demonstrated. If somebody asked me, then what would you believe? I would believe whatever was conclusively demonstrated, but I don't know what that would be until I'm confronted with it. They find a particle, I'm going to believe is a particle, just like uranium you know, any atomic structure we've identified, any, any you know, protons, electrons, et cetera. I, I'm, I'm going to accept whatever the findings uh, of science are to the extent that I right. understand them. Granted, there are things that I don't understand, so I can't possibly accept them. There are lots of things like that. Yeah, that's pretty much why I became a philosopher and uh, looked into things like that, so. <laughs> Great. Is that all you had? Yep. All right. All right thanks, thanks a lot for calling. Thanks. We've got Chris in Greenville, South Carolina. Hey. How are you, Chris? All right. Wait. This is South Carolina, and that says North Carolina. Which is it? Um, South Carolina. Aha. Um, the uh, actually, the uh, previous caller kind of got me thinking about um something uh, about like, you know, demonstrable evidence or something that, you know, either there was the creator of the universe or there is. Um, what, what would you guys consider evidence for a creator or something? Like, would it be like seeing a creation or something? I mean, uh, something created like out of nothing or something? Seeing something created out of nothing, like in a, you know, verifiable context was certainly help to at least demonstrate that such a thing is done. I mean, I guess there's like virtual particles and I'm not really up on all of what's available for evidence on those, whether they've been demonstrated to what degree. But um, yeah, there are these things called virtual particles, which are a model that pops in and out of existence. I don't know how valid or invalid it is. But um, the, that's a, a fantastic question because the idea of would you accept a God, what would it take for you to believe in God? It, it ultimately depends on how they're defining the God. So, yeah, I, I need to know what it is the claim is before I can say what it would take to demonstrate that claim. And I might not right. even be able to define what would demonstrate the claim. I've been handed really incoherent definitions of God before, where if someone asked me, what, what would it take for you to believe in this? I'm like, I don't know, because I don't even know what that is. I mean, you just defined it, but I have no clue what you're talking about. So it really depends on the claim. All right, well, I think that uh, a lot of people try to put the label 
will of God on like some sort of like natural forest or something like that. So I've seen that. Occurring. Yeah, I've definitely seen that. Yeah, the, the idea that God is nature. I've had people tell me God is energy. Um, uh, pantheists love. say that God is the universe. Yeah, God, God is love. Um, ultimately, though, when you start out, when you start looking at what energy is, and you say, "Okay, is this what you're asserting your God is?" You're going to get back no. So they'll define it and say, "It's you know, my God is energy." And then you say, "Okay, well, this is what energy is. Is this what you're saying your God is?" And they respond and say, "No." So I now I'm back to square one where I don't know what their God is. They're calling it energy, but when I tell them this is what I understand energy to be, and they're saying that's not what my God is. So then I I'm it's back just to a different God. It's a different energy. See, th there's and baggage in the word. It's, it drives me crazy. It's one of the reasons why I hate the word spiritual and spirituality, because they're completely freaking useless labels. But this, the, the, the label that God that gets bandied about, people are like, oh, no, no, God is nature. God is love. God is energy. Or, or God is all of us or some consciousness. Yet, no, no, no. The word carries some baggage with it because of its historical use. It would be wrong for me to say, this coffee cup is God. It doesn't have any of the identifiable characteristics of any of the classical definitions of God where we get the baggage from. And the biggest one is, this exists. I mean, there, there's one big difference for you right there. But the, it's, it's dishonest, disingenuous of people to, to try to argue God as something else. Hey, if God is energy and that's all, just use the word energy. All right. You don't get to add the word God and then ignore the baggage when it's convenient and yet use the baggage when it's convenient. You know, oh, God's energy, but he really, really needs 20 bucks. Why? You know, it's, it, it's unfair. It's, it's not an intellectual argument. It is an attempt to sound accommodating. It is an attempt to sound sophisticated. It is an attempt to sound open-minded. And it is none of the above. It is childish and nonsensical. You know, I, I pretty much agree with that, but um, the, uh, you know, I don't want to really sound like I'm 100% agreeing, uh, agreeing with you guys. It's, it's the fact that, um, I'm, I'm just going to let, you know, kind of go along with, uh, you know, the general, your general thoughts. I, I want to uh, present other ideas that um, conflict so we can, like, either argue about something like that so we can, you know, learn more or something like that. So the, the uh, thing that I was mostly thinking about is, that, is to demonstrate, I guess, creation or something like that. I would consider if I saw something coming from nothing, evidence of creation. I wouldn't say that 100 percent, maybe there's some other you know, force behind it or something, but I would say that's pretty strong evidence. Let me just say that right now there is a model called a virtual particle that is, I, like I say, I don't know how demonstrated it is, but the, there seems to be some indicator that there are things that pop into manifestation that is measurable and then disappear and then pop in again. So you might want to look that up because my question would be, what if you had a particle that could wave in and out of measurable manifestation? That to you would be demonstration of creation? Um, I, I've seen I would something. Say, I would say no, that because it's sort of, I, I really don't know how to express my ideas about it. You know, I can't really find the right words. I, well, I wish I could, uh, I guess, articulate myself better, but um. I think one of the things we have to be careful about is, yeah, what you mean by something from nothing, sure, that'd be evidence. Uh, the question is, how do you test and identify that? Because I've seen something apparently come from nothing. I've been to tons of magic shows where that happens. Um, the thing is, you need to devise some sort of testable conditions by which to demonstrate that, yes, in fact, there's nothing, and something has come from this nothing. And then once that's done, the only thing you know is that it is possible for something to come from nothing. In order to claim that, that you've identified the cause of this, you need additional evidence.